I'm Timo Hotti, a solution architect from OP. I'm going to describe what the digital identity for a company looks like and how you create it using the combination of two ledgers, Corda and Hyperledger Indy. Agenda is in brief is that let's see what's digital corporate identity in general, where it's needed, how it's created, and can we actually do this today. So when you want to define something, you go to the Wikipedia, see what's the official truth about something. And for digital identity, this is what Wikipedia says. Basically, it says that if you want a computer to do something for you, you need a digital identity. If you want to automate something, better have a digital ID. The next thing to be checked from Wikipedia is uh, what's corporate identity. This is a marketing term, and it basically says that uh, it's, it's a manner in which a corporation firm or business presents themselves to the public, such as customers, investors, and employees. And this sounds like a useful thing. Let's see what uh, Wikipedia has about digital corporate identity. It doesn't exist. Um, so, this is an interesting situation. We are digitalizing world, but we don't have digital identities for corporations. So, this is the starting point of our project. So, we went to the drawing board uh, and see what do we need to do to create a kind of prototype of digital corporate identity that is usable in digital business networks, just as code. Where do we need this uh, digital corporate identity? This is how we uh, create business systems today. This is a prototype of a simple silo. Let's say invoice processing system of a buyer. So we have uh, the user table of the, of the system. We have the customer data <laughs> and the customer table of the system. These are kind of identity uh, data inside our silo. Identity of us and identity of our customers. And then we have, let's say, the invoice uh, table in there. So this is how we make uh, systems today. If this was a buyer system, this is the seller system. It's uh, done in a similar way, uh, but they have different identity data there, uh, and uh, they have different uh, business logic for the essentially same business object, the invoice. And if you want to make these two together, uh, work together, then you need an intermediary. And uh, these things are complex, believe me. Uh, but this is how we do things today. And this is now about to change. The two reasons for the change. Uh, first of all, there's a thing called GDPR, for instance, who says that the customer is in control of its own data. Then there's a thing called Corda that says that business goes to networks. And uh, this basically means that uh, there will be disruption. So how does the world after the disruption look like? And this is how it look, I think it looks like. So Corda takes the business transaction from the silos, uh, make a shared implementation of a business transaction that is kind of between uh, the parties of the transaction. And then uh, to participate in this transaction using their identities, using their uh, keys and other identifiers. So this is the world after the disruption. And uh, this red ball is already kind of well in the progress. Coda networks are being built as we speak. But this uh, identity part is sort of uh, in the starting point yet. What we need to do is to really reinvent a core building block of this economy for digital business networks. And what's a core building block? Uh, by the way, what we used to do in silos doesn't work in the networks. So what's a core building block? Here's a hint about that. We're talking about contracts. Uh, everything in the, in the economy is actually a contract. And uh, contract has two parts. It has the paper where you define how you circulate a contract across the participants to get, get them approved, what are the prerequisites for the contract, what are the terms and conditions, what are the outcomes of the contract. This is stuff that uh, Corda does really well, but this is only half of the story. The other 
think that we need to digitalize to make contracts fully digitalized is the signers. And here we need to have a solution that uh, answers to questions like uh, who are the parties uh, of the contract? How do I know that I'm dealing with the right party? How do I know if this party has been authorized to sign this thing? How is the signing actually done and how, you, how can you verify an existing signature? And to manage this side of the solution, we have a thing called self-sovereign identity management. And the technology that we used in the project was uh, called uh, Hyperledger Indie. I have a few slides about the building blocks on uh, both sides. Let's first look at the digital paper part of the problem. And here I describe how Coda works in three slides. So this is the power of Coda side of the story. So Coda has two really cool design decisions in its foundation. One of them is the flow framework. It's basically the thing that uh, you can create a draft of a contract and then you can circulate it in the network across the participants to get their approvals and their signatures. And uh, finally, when the flow is completed, then the notary confirms the transaction. This is very powerful stuff. The other thing in Coda is this uh, UTXO model that it is based on, which is was in the beginning, it was kind of controversial. Many were asking why it's done, but it actually makes lots of sense. Uh, and the UTXO works so that uh, for a transaction, when you want, want to do something, you have some input states, then you have the transaction logic rules, and then the transaction, create, transaction creates output states. And uh, the transaction needs to be signed by the relevant participants of the transaction. And this is also very powerful stuff and new, new stuff. And why this is so powerful is that uh, now you can make systems where you can chain transactions together. So if we have an, ex an example from the invoicing world, for instance, you can have a quote state which, from which you create an order state using a create order transaction. From order state, you can create an invoice once the order has been delivered. From the invoice, you can create a financing contract once, uh, once that's uh, needed. So you can create this kind of transaction chains which actually make business processes. <coughs> so what Coda essentially is, it's a business process management network, not only for banks, but for everything. And that it is able to deal with money, that's a huge bonus, but uh, it's not a big deal, really, really there. Then the other part of this uh, story is the digitalizing the signer of the contract. And here we are talking about uh, the self-sovereign identity management uh, implemented in Hyperledger Indip. And uh, the infrastructure, there was a separate uh, presentation yesterday about, uh, about Hyperledger Indy, quite technical. If you were there, you, you know this already. So Indy has this self-sovereign principle of our identity management, which means, which means that entities manage their own data in the network, and the trust is provided by this blockchain network that is kind of the core of the, uh, of the entire solution. So we have this ledger network, which is kind of a Bitcoin network, kind of broad consensus thing, uh, where you manage the identifiers, public keys, and uh, pointer, pointers to the private data of the identities. So there's nothing private in this ledger. All the private data is in these agents, uh, which are linked to these uh, uh, identifiers uh, in the ledger pool. The agents, they basically can provide what, what's called verifiable identity claims. What, I, what those are, I will tell you next. And it also controls who can see the things that you disclose about yourself. So we're talking about consent management. So how does the self-sovereign ID for a business look like? Now that we have this uh, ma management mechanism, we need to uh, define for the business organization at least three things to make it identity properly defined. You need to have the identifiers, the names, addresses, and so on. That's part, one part of it. The other part is uh, who owns the company. Who are the, who have shareholder claims to the company. That's an important part of it. And uh, also, who have the right to represent the company. How do we do this in a self-sovereign identity management network? 
The self-sovereign um, idea, idea is quite simple. I have an identity and I can have claims about myself that are verified by third parties. So I can claim that uh, OP is my bank. That can be verified by OP. I can also claim that OP is my employer. That's also verifiable by OP. Uh, I can claim that I'm a, I'm a citizen of Finland. That's verifiable by uh, the government of Finland and so on. So my identity is uh, claims that are uh, verified by third parties. Company's identity is exactly similar thing. So company can claim that uh, this person is our employee, this, per, uh, this person is our CEO, these are our board members, these are the other representatives and so on. So the self-sovereign identity management, although it wasn't really designed for managing corporate IDs, it actually is a perfect match for it. In addition to define the schema for this uh, corporate ID, we need also to define the processes how that ID is created. So we need to have digital processes for setting up the companies, specifying governance rules, uh, authorizing persons as representatives of the company and so on. These processes actually are something that Coda does very well. Here's a recap about, about the self-sovereign identity now as we see it. So we have, the company itself has its own identity which actually is associated with the self-sovereign identities of the stakeholders of the company, like the CEO, bank, employee, board member, shareholder. And these uh, connections between these different uh, entities are uh, expressed as uh, verifiable claims, as I described. And uh, this identity must be created and maintained using a trusted, compliant, multi-party process. And that's something where the coda was good. I just, just to show that now we know what's digital corporate identity. We did this in a, pro, a project where uh, the bank, bank members were OP and Nordea. There were some other uh, companies called, uh, for instance, called, uh, one called Asiakastieto, and then some Finnish authorities who together created a prototype of this kind of solution. By the way, now Wikipedia can actually create the page. And the next thing is that uh, Antti Kettunen from Tieto <coughs> describes the actual uh, implementation of the design. Okay, thanks Timo. Uh, I'm going to briefly run through what we did in practice in Project Mercury. So, my name is Antti Kettunen, I work for Tieto. Tieto is a system integrator in Nordics. And um, we actually just announced earlier this week that we're now new partners of R3. So, really wonderful to be here. So, as said, Project Mercury builds a business network. It builds a quarter based business network for forming a limited liability company. We do that fully digitally. It's a proof of concept, but it's definitely not just a technical proof of concept. We validated the business vision. We validated the legal compliance as well as the technical feasibility of making this happen. We used, as, as Timo said, both Hyperledger Indy and Corda and just released it earlier this year. Aside from the banks, we had tax administration and patent registry office, really critical pieces uh, from Finnish government that is needed definitely for this kind of a national and both international company identity development. So the current company regi registration process is, is quite complex. You have a lot of manual steps. You have to create the founding documents, sign those documents manually or digitally depending where you're doing that upload those documents, uh, apply for bank accounts, pay equity from each, each shareholder, and then actually bring those receipts of those equity payments to accountants, and then pay the registration fees, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of different manual steps that need to happen. And we digitized this uh, by using Corda and Indy. We, we did it so that we are able to not only found the, the company identity, but also sign those, create those representation rights so that the CEOs, board, board members and, and such can actually utilize their identity, the self-sovereign identity and their relationship with the company to show that they are able to represent the company. Uh, we also tested actually at the side that, hey, can we do something for PSD2? You know, give some kind of a claim that this bank can debit equity from my account. Notoriously hard, if I've understood, especially the contract part. We did it quite simply here. 
And Asia Castilla, the, the, one of the uh, private partners, also provided the KYC checks here, etc. So we, we created this shared process that enabled to create the business-ready company. And I want to go fast because I want to make sure we get to the good part quickly. And um, I think Timo said this quite well. Corda and Indy are just match made in heaven. Corda handles very well the legal agreements, the, uh, the business processes, sharing of those processes and, and handling just the data exchange between those. And Indy does not want to have anything to do with that. They just want to hold, make sure that the self-sovereign identity is there. And Indy does not touch the business process. They're not interested in that. They just want to make sure that the data that is given by one identity to another is actually trustworthy. And do it so that it is a privacy respecting. So we do not want to uh, disclose any other information than what the individual wants to. And we want also that the company is able to verify without a doubt that that's the information is actually true. Now this is the good part. So if you want to rem remember something, this is one of the slides to remember. We create a local network, extensible local business network. And why is local? Because companies are tied in with some national legislation, always. If we just create a global network, which legislation would it use and how would you govern that? I think that's going to be a problem. So we created a local Corda network that is globally connected via the decentralized identity. So each organization had, of course, a Corda node, but each of them also had an Indy node, meaning that they already have a way to communicate in the decentralized identity network. And each stakeholder, any founder or anybody individual in the process, they used user interfaces. Uh, in our project, it was done through the, uh, the banks. So banks created the user interfaces and the process management for the stakeholders were done through the bank's user interface. And each individual also had an Indie agent. Now Indie agent just means basically a software like let's say a mobile bank or any other type of software that you use as an individual to control your identity in a self-sovereign manner. In our case, in our demo, we, we did do it within the bank. Uh, that's one way to do that. You're also, you're also able to do it so that the agent would be from any provider from other side of the world. So you could, let's say in Finland, we could have Chinese people coming in and founding startups and proving their identity using their self-sovereign identity uh, through Indie Network. So the communication happens actually between the Indie agents uh, when it comes to the individual and organization communication. And then when we found the new company during that process, that entity also gets their own Indie agent. So we have an Indie agent for each identity in the network, and then all the corporate identities here have both Corda and Indie. India nodes here. So we make sure that the business network, the processes are local and we tie it in with the national legislation and we use the, the uh, globally connected decentralized identity. And that's how we got into actually creating that digital identity for corporations as, as Timo said. So we have the founding documents that the registration office, the patent and registration office is able to issue to the corporate identity. We have shareholders and board members that the company itself says that these are my board members. We have shares that are then also issued by the company. And uh, representation rights, same way, as well as identifiers and keys that enable actually the company identity to be used same way as you would have an individual identity. To sign documents, to even sign into websites. So very cutting edge, if you will. So our vision is that actually it's an, this is an example of a business network that is going to be the future of, of platform economy. So platform economy from our perspective is going to be more like this. It's going to be ecosystems that handle certain areas like company identities or real estate marketplaces, et cetera, et cetera. So you have these business networks that, that use one or more distributed ledger technologies and create a really disruptive movement. And then the services, individuals, and what, what have you, they connect with these business networks. Um, I think in our text we said we have a demo. Unfortunately, we did not want to show a demo because it's, it's boring, clicky, clicky stuff. We're not here to show the user interface. But um, what I can do is I can just maybe show something here. We are more interested in this, I know, that how things work. I'll, I'll skip some of these digital document signing stuff. KYC, we used uh, uh, Asia Casteta, which is the KYC service provider. 
Uh, we also did the PST2 thing. So I just want to show this because I know this is probably mo very interesting to many of you. How we did the PST2 authorization. We used the India identities where you actually have keys. You create key pairs between, uh, between the connections you make. So in this case, the shareholder has their key pairs with the company's bank, the new company's bank. And then we also have key pairs with my own bank as a shareholder. And what I can do is I can create a uh, claim, or we call this delegated credential, basically saying that you are allowed to take money from my account in, in my other bank. And you can do it within this time period and this much, much amount of money you can do. And I'm signing this with the keys that my bank knows, but nobody else knows. So when I give that claim and the new company's bank then forwards that claim forward to, to my bank, my bank is able to verify that, hey, was this actually coming from me? Did I give this claim? Did I issue this claim to the other bank? And using that information, they're able to provide access tokens. And using that access token, the other bank is then able to debit that equity. And I think this is going to be something revolutionary. And you can see that you can do this decentralized without me writing any manual documents, without me necessarily even accessing my own bank. And this is one of those cool things that we both, with Cord and Indy, managed to do this in no time. So yeah, just a just few months, the whole thing was done from design to finish. And um, of course, it's going to be really interesting to see where this leads us into. Um, I think we're out of time right now. I'm trying to click it forward, so, right. So I'll just leave it here. We have now some Q&A, and I know you're probably interested in talking more. So we will be staying here after this. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much, uh, Tim and Antti. That, uh, that was fantastic. So the first question is, why do we need two blockchain platforms for this uh, use case, Hyperledger and in Indian Corda? Can we not also have the business logic written up in Hyperledger Indy? Yeah, uh, yeah I think I answered that, that Indy doesn't want, want anything to do with business processes itself. And if it's peer-to-peer, -peer basically. Information exchange in Indy is peer-to-peer, -peer and the ledger is used only for verifying keys and so forth. So you don't actually handle any business process in Indy, and you don't want to do that. Yeah. Fit for purpose, always. Um, could we use this ap application to do a KYC for companies, and, and who sets the standards? Uh, definitely we could do that, yes. <laughs> Without uh, telling anything more about that, but yes, that's one of the these very uh, obvious use cases for this foundation to build on. And so, uh, who sets the standards? the uh, con consortium that actually starts investigating this KYC stuff using this foundation. So it happens somehow, someday. Fantastic. Um, do you think it would be possible to use a digital corporate identity as a replacement for the current PKI processes and certificates used for identity of quarter nodes? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Yeah, why, <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. We, we have considered that, to be yeah. honest, when we're building stuff. And, uh, but we haven't delved really deeper yet. Something <laughs> to look into. Yeah, definitely. Uh, how can identities on a permissioned network be really self-sovereign? Oh, that's a good question. I don't think we have any time for that. Um, we've, we've got a few minutes. We've got a few <laughs> minutes, um, but that definitely delves into the self-sovereign identity core. Uh, it's really about who handles the keys. And that is going to be the key thing, uh, pun intended, for the next decade, is how do you handle keys? When actually a person starts to have not one or two, but hundreds of keys that you use to identify yourself in your various connections. So it all boils down to managing keys and who controls the keys. And if you get that right, you actually get a really well done self-sovereign identity. Fantastic. Um, how does a company acquire attestation to the identity uh, I assume there are some fraud prevent prevention measures. Yeah, so that's basically the uh, registry officials. So registry officials, because at the end of the process, you register everything to the master records. We're not changing that. We're not uh, anarchists who say that everything is decentralized. Although we do believe that the world is going to be a lot more decentralized. But it's the master records that the Finnish government has in the offices. They're going to be doing those claims, those attestations that this is a real company. And then uh, our last question is, do you also provide end user, uh, end user wallets implementation for storing private keys, which has key management and key recovery? 
Yeah, that's, that was uh, out of scope for this exercise, but of course it's one of the things that mm. need to be then uh, taken into consideration when you actually want to go to closer to production. Because this yeah. is a this is a project you guys have only launched quite yeah. recently, yes. so there's still yeah. a lot of development. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah at this point going. we just wanted to uh, yeah. see if this self-sovereign identity uh, and Corda yeah. combined actually can solve this digital corporate identity creation problem and management problem, yeah. and it could. And I would actually the management problem is separate. Yeah. And I think we have a really delicious situation here that uh, we are also in a way exploring how the market would actually want that, because mm. we do see that individuals, for example, they want trust but their trust is not yet based on ledgers they don't understand and they should not understand anything about that so they will likely trust the the institutions that they trust right now so so maybe somewhere there we're going to see uh the foundation of who will be those agents or software uh, but yeah of course as a software house we of course are going to be doing something on that area and uh, not saying anything else yeah Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Andy and Timo. Uh, much appreciated. It was a fantastic talk. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.